On this week's show, the Georgia Southern Eagles finally get a chance to come home to Paulson Stadium as they open up Sunbelt play, hoping to erase an 0-3 start as they host Arkansas State. We'll have previews and interviews and much more as we welcome you inside the Eagles' Nest. Welcome inside the Eagles Nest. I'm your host, Josh Aubrey, being joined by Mike Anthony, sports editor and Georgia Southern beat writer for the Statesboro Herald. And Mike, seems like we've waited a long time for this. It's the Sun Belt opener for the Georgia Southern Eagles as they once again try to put the taste of a, a bad loss out of their mouth and move on. Right now, they've had a couple extra days. The offense, I guess you could say, in the Indiana game had a couple of bright spots threw the ball for two touchdowns, but then all the other areas, you'd have to say, were bad. You had the defense, you had the special teams, you had the penalties, uh, turnovers, everything else is going wrong. Is there a chance Georgia Southern puts everything together finally in a game that they really need it? Well, there's always a chance that you can do that. As you mentioned, a, a few extra days to prepare for this one. You also have the advantage of finally over a month into the season being able to play a game on your home field in your home stadium with your home fans not that that's going to put any extra points on the board but maybe a little bit more comfortable getting to spend all week in your bed getting to spend the night before the game in your own bed being a little bit more used to how things are going to go but as you mentioned at some point basically every part of georgia southern has gone wrong whether it's the defensive uh, line that is young inexperienced got run over a little bit against Indiana. The secondary at points has played well, but it's also pretty banged up. You've got the offense that at times couldn't move the ball, couldn't block. Then against Indiana, they have some plays that look like they might get busted open. They end in fumbles. And special teams, Georgia Southern, a big play called back due to a penalty. Then they go ahead and give up a punt return for a touchdown. So right now, it just seems like they can't step in any one direction without kind of stepping on a rake and uh, hitting themselves right in the face. So Yes, there have been sparks, there have been glimmers almost everywhere, but there's been a whole lot more of the bad stuff, and it's erasing all those bad things, erasing all those mistakes, and hopefully what's left over is going to be enough of a complete game to finally put it together, finally get a win. We know how bad the Eagles have been statistically, whether it's running, which we assume they're going to be able to do, and they've said they're going to do since Tyson Summers got here, or last in the nation or close to it in a, in a lot of running categories. However, the bright news is that while they're averaging 12 points and giving up around 38 a game, here comes Arkansas State in. They're giving up over 30 points. They're scoring over 30 points, which could be a tough one. And they're led by Justice Hansen, their quarterback, who has been uh, throwing for over 300 yards a game this year. I know he was a little banged up in the last game. First of all, his latest status there and how you see the, uh, do you think with the Arkansas State's defense giving up as much as they have, that that might be uh, just what the doctor ordered for the Eagles. Well, as far as uh, doctors and Justice Hansen go, it seems like he's going to be okay. He was questionable over the weekend. He's been upgraded to probable. Georgia Southern and their fans will have to look out for that. The last time they saw Justice Hansen, he was somehow converting a fourth and 16, then throwing a ball into the corner of the end zone to complete that comeback in Jonesboro last year. So the offense is going to run through him. The defensive secondary, the pass rush for the Eagles, they'll have their hands full. And as far as the defense goes, this is an Arkansas State defense with a lot of playmakers on the defensive line, a lot of strength and athleticism. They just haven't been wrapping up and tackling. You talk to some of the Arkansas State fans, and they say that they're real good at running into people, just not good at getting them to the ground. And for Georgia Southern, blocking's been an issue. You want to make sure that those guys aren't running into eagle ball carriers, especially in the backfield. That's been their main problem so far. Yeah, the front seven for Georgia Southern, and besides Logan Hunt, has really struggled a lot. Uh, as for the secondary, we thought it would be probably one of the strengths of the team this year, and it may have been, except they're banged up back there, which could be trouble when you bring in a team that throws the ball like, the, like Arkansas State does. Yeah, and I think that that secondary has proven itself with a lot of young guys being thrown right into the deep end of the pool last season. They were able to make the most of it. I know the, the record wasn't quite what they wanted them to be, but you could see growth throughout that secondary unit coming into this season. As you mentioned, it could have been a strength, especially with all the talent, all the seniority graduating off the front seven. 
I think it's been there at times. Monquavian Brinson looks like one of the shutdown corners in this conference. Some good safeties, but that's where the injuries have happened. I think the biggest thing, though, is just the Georgia Southern offense keeps on putting its defense in a bad spot. They're out there for 70, 80 snaps a game. They're having to defend short fields. I think you would see much better numbers out of this defense if they didn't take the field every time at about midfield and trying to protect not even a lead, but trying to keep a deficit where it's at. All right, well, we had a chance to talk with Georgia Southern head coach Tyson Summers and running back Wesley Fields about the matchup coming up against Arkansas State. Uh, I think we certainly did take a step forward. We we definitely did improve. Uh, we still got to continue to fix the small details, the smallest, just like missing missing assignments and the small details and just continue to just uh, fix those and continue to go out and give effort. What's the mood of the team right now? Uh, we still got our heads up. I mean, we realize we were in three, but... It's not the end of the world. It's not the end of the season. We still got a long season, and we start comes to play this week. So that's that's a big that's a big time for us. And I feel like everybody is, everybody is still in tune, and everybody is still trusting the process. Arkansas State, what do you know about them? What do you expect? Them? Uh, they're very good. I mean, defense uh defensive side of the ball. I don't I don't really too much watch the offense, but the defensive side of the ball. I mean, the defensive line they're pretty big, physical, uh, linebacker core, uh, very athletic. Uh, they react quick, and the secondary. I mean, I think they're. I think they're pretty good guys at uh, secondary, and, and as a unit, I feel like they play hard and they play fast, and they and they chase the ball, and so I feel like they get a good effort too. So right now, conference is always what it's about. We are in three, that's regular, and it's it's a it's like it's like season two. Season one was zero and three, and season two we gotta be one and zero. We gotta be one and zero today. I think the pressure that we uh, have is a pressure we've already are applying to ourselves and knowing what situation we're in to this point. The beauty of that is knowing that we're 0-0 this week and 0-0 in conference play and trying to do everything we can do to get a win. We're more excited to play in Paulson than we are anything else and worried about what the TV or ESPN or any of those things say. We're just excited to be home. Coach, uh, Arkansas State's got five wideouts with over 10, 12 receptions. So how do you try to slow down such a balanced passing attack like well, that? Well, uh, you know, we've got to be able to make sure that the coverages that we're calling are, are – uh, our coverages that give us a chance from a scheme standpoint. We feel uh, really good, uh, you know, particularly when we're healthy in our secondary. feel like that's one of the strengths of our entire football team. I uh, feel really good about the corners that we have. And I think that, uh, you know, they're, and at that position at corner, you've got to be somebody that can play. And uh, and whether you make a great play or whether a big play happens on you, you got to put it behind you, move to the next snap. You've got to have it be a guy that's got a bunch of confidence, a bunch of swagger. I think that uh, Coach Ryle's done a tremendous – job with that group and I think that they're playing at a high level they're young they're all they're all sophomores uh, but they're young but they they uh, I think they're playing well and we're really looking forward to what they got they do have a lot of catches a lot of those are, are screens you know uh, as a high number of those are screens so it's not as much about how many catches they've got in my opinion as it is about how many yards they've got off of those catches coach X's and O's Arkansas State what kind of problems do they present what do you expect out of them on Wednesday well they do a great job uh, I'll start with the offense obviously you know Buster Faulkner and, and Blake Anderson kind of do the offense together and uh, I think that they create a lot of different things for you that are problematic they uh, they move the ball down the field well uh, they're talented uh, they're going to play at a high pace uh, obviously uh, like they have the last couple of years and trying to play fast and they do they, they, they stretch you from sideline to sideline and vertically and that's kind of their their version of being able to run inside zone and gap schemes up front with what they have, but being able to run bubble screens on the exterior and be able to throw vertical routes off of that at the same time. Uh, like we talked earlier about a lot of perimeter screens, uh, a lot of screens and goes, trying to get the ball down the field and get guys in with the wrong places with their eyes. Uh, they make you tackle in space, which has got to be a focal point for us this week. Uh, defensively, Joe cawthon has been there for a couple years. Joe's been a defensive coordinator for a long time. I have a lot of respect for him. His defenses always play hard. They're always sound, and, uh, and, and he usually plays with a very dominating defensive front. You know, he's got two guys on his defensive line this year that jump out at you as good as anybody in the country with a, you know, D-line or a transfer. And then also with having, um, I think his uh, last name, Roland Jones, is, you know, preseason defensive player of the year. So that's, we've got to be able to win the line of scrimmage and we've got to be able to make people miss once we get to the second level. Kind of strange that you're playing Arkansas State because you've kind of mentioned them as kind of a, a measuring stick of, hey, they started the season struggling, flipped it around, oddly enough, against Georgia Southern. Now you get an opportunity to kind of do the same thing. If you're going to flip things around, 
starting with Arkansas State would be a good way to start. Be a great opportunity. Uh, again, if you look at uh, look at last year where we were at, we were three and one at the time, and they were zero and four. Had lost to an FCS team the week week before, and uh, give them a lot of credit. You know, we had we had we had the game, and uh, and we didn't make it happen, and they did. And so, uh, this obviously is a well coached football team, Arkansas State, and their history through the Sun Belt. I can't remember if it's four out of the last six or five out of the last six where they've been able to win a conference. But an outstanding job by both their players and their staff last year after starting 0 and 4, and then being able to finish with eight wins and winning a bowl game. Those are all things and co champions in the league. Those are all. Uh, those are all things that are that are uh, that they did a tremendous job with, and we're looking to do those same things as we flip this thing around this week. Hey, Miss Thompson, everything's fine. It's going to be no problem. I'll have you done in a few minutes. My name is Paisley Nordhaus, part owner of Complete Car Care, and I want you to come see me. Well, Mike, the Georgia Southern Eagles, the last team in all of FBS to be able to host a home game. We know what happened with her, uh, the Hurricane Irma and having to go to Birmingham to be able to get that game in. But here it is, Wednesday night. Your thoughts on the game. This is usually where we give our prediction and how we feel like the game will, will play out. Well, I think the Georgia Southern, again, is going to be excited to be at home. I know there's been some rumbles and some grumbles from the students, from the fan base. That's definitely going to happen when you've got an 0-3 record, when you lose to an FCS team, when you kind of aren't competitive against some bigger teams that, while not favored, you thought that you could be a little more competitive against. I think that this, this home game might cure some of what ails them. There's still going to be people that aren't happy with the team and the direction they're going. But it's one thing to watch them on TV and be disgruntled. It's another to show up to your stadium, watch your team. I think in the end you see a pretty good crowd. I think you see them get loud. It's up to the Eagles to give them something to get loud over. And I think that as much as they've struggled, there are enough bright spots that I think they can pull it together. Arkansas State, a very good team, but they haven't quite put it all together yet. I think that the home field advantage lifts Georgia Southern. Kind of running out of strings to pull out to find optimism here, but I'll give them one more shot. I think they figure out a way to squeak by. I'll go Georgia Southern 24-21. Yeah, I think Arkansas State's offense is pretty high-powered, and I think the problems that Georgia Southern has had uh, will be a little bit better this time around, but I still don't think it might be enough to be able to beat an Arkansas State team who I think is pretty good. I see it being more of a 31-21 10 point maybe eight point win for arkansas state hope i'm wrong hope the game gets a, a georgia southern a victory and gets them turned around much like arkansas state did against the eagles last year in a similar situation all right mike before we go let's mention quickly about the other sports that are going on right now volleyball men's and women's soccer uh, men's and women's soccer they're they're jumping into conference play uh, women's soccer opened with a win they dropped three in a row inside sunbelt play but they bounce back, get a big win. They're back up to two and three. They're going to need to take that momentum all the way up a mountain later this week as they travel to Boone, a chance to get back to 500 in conference play. As for the guys, the conference play goes along a lot slower there. Only five conference games on the schedule. They opened up with a win a couple of weeks ago against Coastal Carolina. The odds on favorite to win the conference, so they're kind of in the driver's seat right now. They've played a few non-conference games and done pretty well. Uh, this weekend, they finally get a chance to move to 2-0. and They'll get a chance to do it at home against their rivals as Georgia State comes to town. So a chance to really, uh, uh, you know, they're in the driver's seat. A chance to really uh, lap some people here is Georgia State, another one of the teams expected to maybe be there at the end in men's soccer. And as for the volleyball team, still hanging around 500. They're well, well into conference play now. They played some some of the better Sunbelt teams out there in Texas and South uh, Texas State and South Alabama. Uh, sitting at two and three in the conference right now with a chance to maybe get over the hump with a good weekend or two. All right. Well, that'll wrap it up for now. Don't forget, we'll have highlights of the game late uh, Wednesday night and early Thursday morning, and Mike will have the whole story at Statesboro Herald in the newspaper and at statesboroherald.com. That'll wrap it up for now. For Mike Anthony, I'm Josh Aubrey. Thanks for joining us. Hope to see you again next week.